Hello everyone, welcome to the Lab Informant. This is a platform that helps you to understand about your health conditions and also the role of laboratory in diagnosis and management of your health conditions. It is your presenter, Mr. Eric Masiga. And today I'll discuss with you about menstrual disorders. In today's focus of attention, I'll help you understand what are menstrual disorders, what causes menstrual disorders, types of menstrual disorders, diagnosis of menstrual disorders, and mainly laboratory diagnosis, as well as role of laboratory in diagnosing and management of menstrual disorders. I'll also discuss with you about the treatment of menstrual disorders and prevention of menstrual disorders. By definition, menstrual disorders refers to a group of destructive physical or emotional problems that can affect a woman's normal menstruation cycle or the periods. Some of these problems may include painful cramps during the time of menstruation, Sometimes a woman may also have abnormally heavy bleeding, missing the periods, or having unmanaged mood swings. Here are some of the factors that can contribute to having the menstrual disorders or problems. And these factors may include having uterine fibroids. Sometimes hormonal imbalances can also affect your menstruation. If you have a history of sexually transmitted diseases, especially the STIs, can also lead you to have menstrual disorders. In some cases, having diseases like uh, cancer or polycystic ovary syndromes. If you have blood clotting disorders, and also in some cases, if you are using certain medications like uh, hormonal therapy or bulk control pills, they can also affect your menstrual cycle as a woman. By the way, there are several types of menstrual disorders, and some of these types include dysmenorrhea. Dysmenorrhea simply means having painful cramps, or if your cramps are so painful than normal during your menstruation cycles as a woman. We also have a, a type of menstrual disorder known as a premenstrual syndrome. With the premenstrual syndrome, a woman can have some physical or psychological problems prior to their menstruation period, and this is known as premenstrual syndrome. Hey, happen you are to a mood swings. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. Anyway, we also have another type of menstrual disorder known as uh, menorrhagia, and menorrhagia simply means having or experiencing a heavy bleeding than normal or than your usual days that you're supposed to take when you the bleeding that takes too long than the normal days of uh, that you're supposed to have your menstruation cycle we also have another type of menstrual disorder referred to as amenorrhea and amenorrhea in simple terms it means not having period this is an instance where a woman expects to have their period but they don't they don't see the period so these are missed periods and with amenorrhea, you may find that you can uh, miss your period for a couple of months, maybe let's say two, three, four, five, or six, or even more months. Another type of menstrual disorder that women experience is having infrequent menstrual periods. You may find that your periods are coming. This month you see your periods, and the next month you don't see your periods. They don't actually come on time, or they may come after a short time and then they take long to, to come. And this is what we call oligomenorrhea, infrequent menstrual periods. Even so, some women also experience periods that are lighter than normal. And this is referred to as hypomenorrhea. Diagnosis of menstrual disorders. When it comes to diagnosis of uh, menstrual disorders, this starts with a detailed medical history taking and physical examination, including pelvic examinations, and pap smear. Menstrual disorders are one of the reasons that most women visit their gynecologist. So when you visit your gynecologist, the doctor will now examine you and they may also order for a pap smear. With pap smears, there are some tests that can be taken from your cervical area and taken to the lab. A pathologist or a specialty doctor in the lab will look at the smears to determine if they could be, they could be abnormal and this also aids in diagnosis of your menstrual disorders. In many cases, you may be asked to keep a diary of your menstrual cycles, including the dates, the amount of flow, pain, or any other symptom that may occur. In order to diagnose menstrual disorders, there are a couple of tests that can be ordered 
to aid in the diagnosis. And your doctor may order some blood tests or hormonal tests. The doctor can also order for an ultrasound and the ultrasound will help the doctor to detect some conditions that may be causing the menstrual disorders. A doctor may also order a hysterosonography. It's an ultrasound that uses sterile saline to expand the uterine cavity for a better imaging. We also have MRI for intricate or clear pictures of the uterus and its surrounding organs. The doctor may also order for a hysteroscopy and with a hysteroscopy it's just an office procedure that uses a small light telescope called a hysteroscope and this hysteroscope will be inserted through the vagina and the cervix to examine uterus for fibroids, polyps or other areas of concern. The doctor sometimes may also order for a laparoscopy. A laparoscopy will look for abnormalities of your reproductive organs using a tiny lighted instrument with a camera at the end. It is called a laparoscopy. The laparoscopy is inserted through a small incision or a cut in your abdomen. The doctor may also order for an endometrial biopsy. And an endometrial biopsy it simply means a small sample of the lining of the uterus is removed from your body and examined for abnormal cells. DNC involves scrapping the inside of the lining of the uterus and cervix to take a small tissue sample to relieve heavy bleeding. With these diagnostic tests in mind, we can now narrow down to laboratory diagnosis of menstrual disorders. And when it comes to laboratory diagnosis of menstrual disorders, there are some fluctuations of hormones that can lead to irregular periods. The laboratory can determine the follicle stimulating hormone abnormalities. Thyroid stimulating hormone can be measured as a contributing factor or a factor that can be causing your abnormal periods. Luteinizing hormone efficiency, 17 hydroxy progesterone can also be measured. The laboratory can also detect the levels of DHES as a cause of menstrual disorder and also determining if you have a higher level of testosterone which are male hormones can also lead to a menstrual disorders. When it comes to prevention of menstrual disorders, try practicing relaxation and stress reduction techniques. You can also modify your diet. You can actually consider consulting your nutritionist so that the nutritionist can also guide you through professional insight on what kind of foods you need to take in order to manage your menstrual disorders. You can also try having regular exercises as a measure of prevention. In some cases, the doctors may also opt for an option of having non-surgical or minimal invasive procedures to prevent menstrual disorders. Thank you for your time and attention and I hope that the information shared in this video has been of great help and importance and I hope you learn from it. Please subscribe, like and share with your friends and family to help them stay informed and on top of their health. Have a nice time.